Hello, my name is Ashley Marolo, and I'm a dietetic student at the University of Dayton, and today I'm going to be uh, showing you how to perform a nutrition-focused physical exam. We're going to use a systematic approach, moving from more globalized regions to localized regions, and moving from top to bottom. So we're going to start with the head, and move down to the face, the shoulders, the clavicle region, and then examine the skin and the hands and the nails. When you first start a physical exam, you wanna walk into the patient's room and introduce yourself and get consent to perform the physical exam. Make sure that they know what the physical exam entails so that they can give consent appropriately. Hello, sir. My name is Ashley Marola and I'll be your dietitian today. I'd like to perform a nutrition-focused physical exam, and what that entails is examining your scalp and your hair. I'll be checking your orbital region, your oral cavity. I'll be palpating your shoulder region and your clavicle region and inspecting your hands and your nails. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay. After you've gained consent from the patient, you want to put on a pair of examining gloves. This will protect you from any pathogens that the patient may be carrying and it'll protect the patient from any pathogens that you may be carrying. At this point, while you're getting ready, you can be doing a general survey of the patient's appearance. You wanna check the pallor of their skin. It should be pink, not overly dark, not overly pale. That would be an abnormal finding. You can also check, do they have dark circles under their eyes? Do they appear well rested? Do they appear to be an appropriate weight for their height? Do you notice any sunken in areas of their face? Overall, do they appear alert and awake and ready for the exam? These are all things that you can be taking note of while you're getting ready. You're also going to pick up tools such as a tongue depressor. You can use a tongue depressor while examining the hair and the scalp to make it easier to view things. You're going to start with the hair and you're going to look. It should be smooth and shiny. It should also be consistent in texture and color. If you noticed an abrupt change in color that was not a result of hair treatment, that would be an abnormal finding. You're also going to check the hair for pluckability. If you pull on the hair and it comes out easily, that would be an abnormal finding. You can use the tongue depressor to pull the hair back and inspect the scalp. You're going to be looking for folliculitis. That's an abnormal finding. The scalp should be pink and smooth. There should be minimal flakiness and scaling. If you noticed excessive flakiness or scaling, that would be an abnormal finding. Take note of any lesions you see. That would be an abnormal finding. You also want to move around and check the nape of the neck. Here you're also looking for folliculitis, lesions, dryness, scaling. The skin should be smooth and intact and even all the way around the head. So you want to inspect all sides and the nape of the neck. Once you've examined the hair and the scalp and the nape of the neck, you can move down to the facial region. You want to look and check for symmetry in the orbital region with the eyebrows and the eyes. You can also check for symmetry with the nose and the lips. After checking symmetry, you can also palpate the temporalis muscle. This will let you know if there has been muscle loss and could be a sign of malnutrition. Sir, do you mind if I touch around your eyes? You're going to take two fingers on either side and you're going to find the temporalis muscle. Ask the patient to clench their jaw. Sir, can you clench your jaw? As you're palpating this region, you should feel a taut, firm muscle. If it felt flaccid or had a very sunken in feeling, that, those would be abnormal findings. When you're ready to perform the orbital exam, you want to look for symmetry between the eyebrows and the eyes. If you noticed loss of hair within the eyebrows, that would be an abnormal finding. You want to look at the sclera. It should be clear and white. If it were pink or yellow or orange, those would be abnormal findings. You also want to look at the cornea. If you notice cloudiness or bateau spots, those would be abnormal findings. Sir, can I pull down your eyelids? 
As you pull down the patient's eyelids, you can be looking for the moistness. It should be moist, not dry. You also want to notice whether it's pale or pink. Pink is normal, pale would be an abnormal finding. You also want to check the nasal region at this point. You want to look for symmetry between the nasal region, and then you also want to inspect inside. Using a pen light can help. You want to check and see that the nasal cavity is not dry, that there's no lesions, and it should be uh, somewhat moist. You can also check the oral cavity at this time. You can look around the mouth. If you noticed angular stomatitis or chelosis, those would be abnormal findings. You can get a tongue depressor. And you're going to ask the patient to open their mouth. Sir, can you open your mouth? Here you're going to check the buccal mucosa and the tongue. The buccal mucosa should be smooth, pink, and moist, free of lesions or abrasions or broken skin. The tongue should be rough in texture, pink, and moist. If it were smooth, swollen, or magenta, those would be abnormal findings. Sir, do you mind pulling down your lower lip, please? Here you can inspect the gums and the teeth and the labial mucosa. The skin should be smooth and intact. It should be moist and pink. If it was pale or there were lesions, those would be abnormal findings. Sir, can you open your mouth one more time? Put your tongue back, please. Yeah. When you're looking at the teeth, you want to check for chipped or cracked teeth or any signs of dental caries, those would be abnormal findings. At this point, you can remove your gloves. We're gonna be palpating muscle and inspecting skin, and it'll be easier to notice roughness or hydration status with bare hands. Sir, can I come around and palpate your shoulder region? Here, you're gonna move behind the patient and you're gonna be palpating their trapezius muscle. Starting at the nape of the neck, you're just gonna palpate down to the acromion process. If you noticed a bony protuberance, that would be an abnormal finding. The deltoid muscle should be rounded and taut, same as the trapezius muscle. Here, you can move around to the clavicle region and palpate the clavicle as well as the subclavicle region or the pectoralis major muscle. They should be taut and firm. If you noticed indentations along the clavicle, that could be a sign of muscle loss and malnutrition. If the trapezius was indented or you had um, very noticeable bony protuberances, those would be signs of muscle loss and malnutrition. From here, we're gonna move to the arm. We're gonna check the tricep and bicep region. We're gonna check the skin and the hands as well. Sir, do you mind making a 90 degree angle with your arm. At this point, we're gonna be checking the tricep and bicep region for fat loss. You're gonna take your um, pointer finger and your thumb, and you're gonna pinch the fat in the skin below the tricep. You should have about an inch of fat, anything less, or if it was mostly skin and not a lot of fat, then that would be a sign of fat loss and malnutrition. You're gonna do the same at the bicep region. You're just going to pinch and you're looking for an inch. At this point, you can check the skin. You're going to be looking for a smooth texture. It should not be too dry or flaky, and it should also not be wet. Just nice and smooth and moist. You can also take notice of petechiae or hyperkeratosis. Those would be abnormal findings. You can also do an edema test. As you have your hand on the patient, just push down firmly with your thumb and release. If the indent from your thumb or your finger stayed in the skin longer, then that would be a sign of edema and an issue with hydration status. You can move down to the dorsal hand. And here, do you wanna put your elbow down? There you go. At the dorsal hand, you can perform a Tuger test. This will check for um, hydration status. You take your pointer finger and your thumb and you pinch the skin and release. Instant recoil is normal. 
If it was a slow recoil, then that could be a sign of dehydration and uh, would be an abnormal finding. Here you're going to check the nails and the skin around the nails. If you noticed a lot of broken skin or lesions or abrasions, those would be abnormal findings. You want to check for proper formation of the lanula and it should not extend beyond half of the nail, but it should be visible. You can also look that the shape of the nail is normal, which would be curved downwards and smooth. If you noticed a um, upward curve of the nail, that's called colonychii and would be an abnormal finding. If you noticed white lines on the nails, that would be leukonychii and would be an abnormal finding. You can also check the pallor of the skin at this point. If it were extremely pale or yellow or orange in appearance, those would be abnormal findings. When inspecting the nails, you can also perform a capillary bed refill test. You're just going to press down on the nail bed with your thumb and release. At first, it'll be white and it'll uh, refill with blood and the pink will return to the nail bed. If it had a delayed recoil in color, that would be an abnormal finding. It should be instant. The last point that you can check for muscle loss and malnutrition is the interosseous muscle. Sir, which hand is your dominant hand? Your right hand is dominant. So can I check your left, please? It's important to check the non-dominant hand because the interosseous muscle can be a lot firmer and more developed in the dominant hand. You're then going to ask the patient to touch their um, forefinger and their thumb. Thank you. And you're going to palpate the interosseous muscle. It should be taut and firm. If it were flaccid or barely there, you noticed a lot of skin, then that would be a sign of muscle loss and possible malnutrition. Thank you, sir.